Next case is a large secondum ASD with severe pH. This is a 21 year old female with, with progressive dyspnea on exertion since last 5 years. She weighs around 37 kg with saturation of 100% on room air. On examination she has cardiomegaly with left parasternal heave. There is a S1 is normal wide and fixed split S2 with loud P2. There is a short grade 2 by 6 ejection systolic murmur in the left upper sternal border. This is a chest x-ray which shows a cardiomegaly with CTR of around 60%. There are dilated MP and central PAs. This is the ECG showing a sinus rhythm with PR interval of 160 milliseconds, a right axis deviation with around 105 and a RVH with strain pattern which is seen in specifically V1 and V2 leads. This is a TE image with horizontal plane done in 0 degrees where you can see the large secondum ASD which is present which on 0 degrees measures around 24 millimeter. This is a bicaval view of the same where the ASD measures maximum of around 31.5 millim millimeters. Patient had severe pH with the RVSP around 88 plus RA with mild TR. This is a 3D image. There was a deficient retroaortic margin with all other margins being adequate. Uh, around one month back she had underwent a cardiac catheterization where we demonstrated that basically the mixed venous there was a step of around 21 percent from mixed venous of 63 percent to 84 in the PA. There was no step down basal. She was uh, the, uh, the basal hemodynamics had showed up moderate to severe pH where PA pressures were 98 by 40 against uh, aortic pressures of 120 by 72. She, w she underwent a vasoreactivity testing with nitric oxide and oxygen where there was no reduction in the PA pressures but however the QP by QS from basal of 2.62 increased to 4.94. The basal PVRI was recorded to be 8.8 .8 wood units meter square which was around on nitric oxide which reduced a significant reduction to 2.4 and PVR to SVR from 0.26 to 0.13. The plan is to repeat the cardiac catheterization, do a balloon interrogation of second term ASD to assess the hemodynamics that if there is any further fall in the PA pressures and then proceed with the device closure of ASD well, as to plan on table whether a usual device would be okay or that we would have to choose a fenestrated device based upon the hemodynamics of the patient. So, uh, Eric, would you like to comment on this yeah, case? Yes, Steve, I just wanted to ask, you don't use 100% oxygen to test, and when you use nitric, is it in room air as well? No, nitric oxide with around 5 to 6 liters of oxygen. Actually, I'll tell you, Eric, the problem that we have. When I give nitric oxide through the tight-fitting mask, the nitric oxide replaces the oxygen in the, in the room air, and that results in marked reduction in the FiO2s. And so we have made it to run parallelly two tubes. One will run about five to six liters of oxygen, and the second one will run uh, nitric oxide to reach uh, 40 to 45 parts per million. And this combination will be, the, uh, will be, will be driven. We tried initially only nitric oxide, and this is this is on spontaneous breathing. This is not on a ventilator circuit. On a spontaneous breathing with a tight-fitting uh, mask. I, I need the needle ready. Needle. Uh, uh, so uh, what what happened was the FiO2s go low. So when we check the uh, uh, pulmonary vein uh, PO2s on a patient who is on full nitric oxide, the PO2s will be 60 to 70. So we decided always to give a combination of uh, oxygen plus nitric oxide. How but do you, you don't give? just do a hundred percent oxygen testing? Not hundred percent. It is not hundred. See, basically, uh, no, but we, you do a hundred percent oxygen without nitric. We d we don't check it nowadays at all. We always put nitric oxide. We don't check the pure oxygen testing that we used to do few, uh, like maybe a decade ago. I, we, we have stopped it. Now we are totally okay. going only for nitric oxide oxygen combination. We usually use 100% oxygen and nitric. Interested in the audience, does anyone just yeah. use 100% oxygen alone or does everyone use it with Masood? We don't have nitric oxide, so we have no choice, but we use 100% oxygen. Uh, what, what is surprising here, Shiva, if you can hear me, it's Masood Sadiq here. Um, if you look at your pressures, your uh, diastolic pressure hasn't come down, your mean pressure hasn't come down.
but your QPQS and your uh, measurements, whatever it means, it shows that your PVR has dropped. It's really hard to believe because uh, uh, if, if your pul pulmonary artery pressures were not dropping at all, including mean and diastolic pressures, it's hard to believe that you actually had a reversibility or reactivity. Okay. Now, so uh, uh, so actually, you, you see, you, you are uh, concerned about this data. Sorry. It, so what would you do? I would have uh, tried occluding at the same time when we gave nitric oxide and see if balloon occlusion will drop the pulmonary artery pressure at all. Because PVR alone, I wouldn't close this AST unless the pulmonary artery pressure drops. If the pulmonary artery pressure does not drop, then I would not close the AST. Any at all, would comment? you not close it at all? Or patient, since uh, we of, think she has well, some reactivity, would we then institute a pH regimen and then potentially retest? Yes, yes. Uh, I agree with that. You will put them on pulmonary vasodilators for a certain period of time, then come back and do a hemodynamic assessment again so and see whether that would actually, uh, you see some element of reactivity, particularly a drop in we find a drop in diastolic pressure, a very sensitive index of, of pulmonary vasoreactivity. Okay. Uh, what, so, what about to put a fenestrated device right away and treat the patient with uh, drugs against the pulmonary hypertension? You could take it either way. Uh, you could either, I would prefer giving pulmonary vasodilators first and then if there is some degree of rea uh, vasoreactivity, still I would put in yeah, a fenestrated device and not, a, not completely close it. Okay. Show the PowerPoint, show the PowerPoint, the pressure trace uh, page again, once again. Uh, yeah. You, 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 you observe there, uh, Dr. Masood, uh, that uh, the moment we start giving nitric oxide with oxygen combination, the pulmonary artery PO2s shoots up to 95. This significantly causes the FIC oximetry based calculations to go, uh, open both the pressure lines, uh, to, to significantly go, uh, like the QP is, is enormously increased. Uh, I do agree that the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure is not falling at all. Uh, 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 and so that is that is of concern, and that was the reason why we did not close. Uh, we are at that point, even though the PVR has fallen down to uh, 2.4, and the PVR by SVR ratio is almost 0 0.13, we decided not to close. We decided to treat her uh, with pulmonary vasodilator, and so she has been on pulmonary vasodilator for the past few months. Uh, now we are repeating the hemodynamics. So show the show the hemodynamics screen big what you see on the yellow is aorta and what you see on the red is pulmonary artery make it 100 scale both both 100 scale and increase the speed increase the speed so the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure is somewhere around 38 or so pulmonary artery mean pressure is about 60 or so so uh, what we are what we are currently going to do will be uh, This catheter, I'm going to ad advance through the uh, ASD, and we are going to do a balloon occlusion and see what happens to the hemodynamics. Because the, I want a stiff wire now. Is she on uh, single agent treatment or what is your regimen now? The, she was on dual and dual drugs. One was an endothelin receptor antagonist in the maximum dose and one was a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor in the maximum dose. We have not started Celexipec, which is also available in our country in the recent times. And uh, we, we, in our country, we don't have a free access to any of the intravenous prostanoids. Uh, so what I'm do going to do is uh, study the hemodynamics on a balloon occlusion over a period of, uh, say, 5 to 10 minutes and see what happens. The patient is conscious. She is uh, breathing on her own. Uh, 
Siva, just a practical question. Before starting to put a balloon occlusion test, what would you expect? So, uh, what are the difference or variations that you would expect to carry on to close the defect I, with I've an ordinary device? to put a senestrated device or yeah. give up? There are three options you are facing with. Correct. Mario, from the previous data itself, uh, we, have, we have information that tells us that we are uh, OK to close this ASD with a fenestrated device. Show the PowerPoint again. See, that, that, that table is most important. That, that's the reason why I'm bringing it again and again. See, here we are, we are observing that the patient is having a uh, yeah, yeah, QP that is significantly going up. The basal QP itself is high, and uh, the uh, pulmonary vascular resistance is dropping down to almost one third of the basal value. And the PVR by SVR ratio is uh, is significantly low. So this uh, uh, tells us that she is acceptable for a fenestrated device. Now today, we probably will look at what is the uh, what is the uh, balloon occlusion pressures, and then take a decision. Uh, okay, get me the si uh, amplitude sizing balloon. Just hold it. And then ultimately for your device closure, do you have uh, intracardiac I, echo for guidance? Say she's nice and conscious, so it would be nice not to have TE, but how do you guide it that way? We have the age-old transthoracic echo guidance, Alison. Oh, transthoracic. I forgot yeah. there was transthoracic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so we, uh, in fact, uh, the reason why I avoided a transesophageal echo and an intubation, like a, uh, intubation was that to keep her fully conscious and uh, to get the, the most uncorrupted hemodynamics because uh, yes. any amount of sedation that I give for facilitating a transesophageal echocardiogram is going to result in alteration of the hemodynamics. So I, I just wanted to avoid it totally. Now I'm having one is to four dilution of my uh, contrast, which I'm going to inflate this sizing balloon, de-air it. We have a question from the audience. Yes, please. Yeah. Is, is there anything that the balloon occlusion would show you that would stop you from closing with a fenestrated device? So are you doing it uh, with a view to potentially not closing, or are you doing it for completeness? Uh, is it uh, Meno who is speaking? I'm Radwa Bader from Bristol, UK. Hi. Uh, the purpose of doing this balloon testing is to find out whether there is going to be any amount of drop in my pulmonary artery pressure. Can you get the catheter? Uh, if suppose the pulmonary artery pressure is dropping with, uh, get me the thermo wire. Uh, if the pulmonary artery pressure is dropping significantly without a drop of the aortic pressure, I'll be very happy. I still will go ahead with a fenestrated, I still will go ahead with a fenestrated device. But if the pressure is not falling at all, absolutely not falling, then I will be uh, thinking about uh, continuing medical management. Show me below. Continuing the medical management with pulmonary vasodilator. Show me below. And, and not closing at and, that point. And not closing and waiting for some more years uh, and then take a decision. Uh, so, I'm going to have a parallel pulmonary artery catheter. The reason I ask is because I think that part of the pulmonary hypertension that's flow mediated doesn't reverse immediately. So, I think you put the balloon up and I don't think you immediately see the pressure drop. You may want to wait a while and then you see a pressure drop. And I okay. wonder whether there's an element of it that reverses gradually over, I, I can't tell you, but I think there is an element that may then reverse over uh, days and weeks. I, I think that her, her, her hemodynamics even before today yeah. uh, would have been relatively favorable for a fenestrated device because it's I, the QPQS that's left to right predominantly. 
I too had this uh, this sort of idea that in a post striker spit shunt, a closure of the shunt is going to result in an acute drop of the pulmonary artery pressure. But in a pre striker spit shunt, the drop will not be there. However, on the contrary, when we started balloon occluding many of our pre striker spit shunts, that includes sinus venosus defects as well as second atrial septal defects, we have observed time and again there will be a substantial drop of the pulmonary artery pressure immediately on balloon occlusion. Let me see what happens to this particular patient. I'm just de-airing the system. I want a three-way. I want a three-way. Connect the three-way into this. So now what I have done is I have put in a balloon. Uh, I, have, uh, I have connected to pressure. So we are having a simultaneous aortic pressure as well as pulmonary artery pressure. And okay, this is inflating more in the go inside. Yeah, thank you very much. I forgot to introduce uh, the, the, the doctor who is now assisting me is Dr. Vishnu, who is one of my senior fourth year fellows. Uh, so now I am I'm just getting my balloon, keep it forward pushed, forward pushed. Yeah, so now I have, I have got my, keep, keep a forward push. I have got my, uh, my uh, atrial septal defect occluded. My go to big screen hemodynamics, take away the camera, big screen hemodynamics. So right now what we observe is the pulmonary artery pressure is coming down to somewhere about 55 to 60. The pulmonary artery mean pressure is about 45. The pulmonary artery diastolic pressure is touching 30. Yeah, so we have a very nice drop. Uh, Some amount of drop. Pressure. Now what I'm going to do, Alison, is to aspirate my uh, balloon, go back to pressure, go back to pressure again. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm, I'm aspirating my balloon and I'm seeing whether the PA pressure increases. Now wait for some time, the balloon is getting deflated. Now my balloon is getting deflated. Can we deflated. see your fluoro as you oh, do the, that also? Yeah, yes. so this is even okay, so it's all better the way down. than expected, isn't yeah. it? So this yeah, is, that's very encouraging. Yeah. So, so now, now I'm, that, I'm, I'm having pulmonary artery pressure which is 75% of systemic right now. And when I inflate, I am inflating now. Keep a forward push. I'm having an so increase I, of the aortic. Uh, I'm, I'm having an increase response. of the aortic pressure and the fall of the pulmonary artery pressure. This is what we have observed time and again in majority of the patients who have hyperkinetic pulmonary hypertension, or in other terms, uh, yeah, quite a reactive vascular bed. While the nitric oxide, go back to PowerPoint, the last picture. Go back to PowerPoint, the last, yeah. If you look at the nitric oxide, on nitric oxide, the pulmonary artery pressure did not fall because the flow was continuing. The flow, perpetual flow is preventing the PA pressure to fall even though the pulmonary arteries are very reactive. Whereas when we occlude it, we are able to demonstrate the fall. So I am, I am, I am convinced pretty much that this patient will benefit from a closure, but to be on the safer side, I still will put in a fenestrated device. I'm not going to be very, uh, uh, very uh, aggressive in trying to put in a uh, yeah, complete closure. So right now see, what I'm see, doing is... Siva, I think those pressures look very good for complete closure, but I'm going to ask Masood whether he'll give you permission to close the defect now. Absolutely. I think uh, we would have done it in the first instance as well, probably, when we gave nitric oxide to see whether there is a reversibility. But after treating it, there is a clear evidence that your PA pressure is falling after the balloon occlusion. So I would have actually closed it uh, straight away because the fall is dramatic. You can see that your diastolic pressure has come down. Your uh, systolic pressures are now 50% systemic. So it's a flow-related pulmonary hypertension. Yeah, we would not so I think expect such a dramatic change, is it? So, uh, what, Eric, you alluded to this. How many in the audience would consider complete closure, perhaps ongoing treatment with pH therapy, and then 
at not doing a fenestrated closure. Complete closure? Show of hands? I, I, okay, we have a handful of us who might be brave. Fenestrated closure? Oh, similar. 51 to 49, 49. maybe. Uh, we, we could Brexit on that. Is, is Dr. Dietmar Schranz in the audience? Dietmar Schranz. Dietmar is not here that I have seen. Dietmar we'll try to get him, see but you try to get the me. casting vote. D Dietmar would love me if I say that I'm going to put a fenestrated device. What, what, what kind of fenestrated device you're going to put in? I mean, I, an ordinary device, you put a, a small hole, a couple of holes. What, what's your uh, precise policy to fenestrated an ordinary device? Well, what do you do for Mario? What do you well, do I'm a very simple man. I just put a needle inside and do a, a balloon or maybe a couple of small balloons in order to have two little holes that are likely to get closed spontaneously with time. How many, of, uh, how many in the audience have got the luxury of using a dedicated fenestrated device that has been made to stay permanently open till you decide to close it? Uh, show of hands. There's maybe a half dozen people in the audience that have a pre-made fenestrated device. I do have so that. Uh, the rest of us have may have to degree. create it. Uh, I want a 34 fenestrated ASD device. I want to show the device first. Yes, please show us your device. Uh, is, it, is it 34 or 30? What was, the, what was the size that we got? No, our, our transistor so page was 30. Did you measure the indentation of the size in balloon when you implanted it? Uh, uh, actually, we, we, uh, we have done a transesophageal echocardiogram and we got 30 millimeter Mario. It has been yeah, our there was indeed an indentation can you, can of, you show of the that, balloon. Uh, can you show that balloon uh, inflation? Yeah. yeah, I think now you showed you us it was uh, 26 by 31, 32 by Somebody T. Somebody can measure this waste. This is a 15 millimeter. Uh, uh, can somebody measure? I will try to get it while I'm showing you the device. Somebody will make a measurement. So this is a, a dedicated, custom-made, uh, fenestrated device. I will show you the device. So this device has got a 8 millimeter fenestration, custom-made. It will stay open till the time I want this hole to be closed. How big is the fenestration? Eight millimeter. Eight. 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 The, the nitinol wires have been bent at that area. The fabric has been closed in such a way that it will stay open ever. Now, I want the short loader sheet. And I want the uh, life tech loading cable. Somebody measure it, please. Life tech loading cable. Loading cable. Can, what is manufacturer again? I'm sorry. This is made by the LifeTech. Uh, LifeTech Life is a, thank you. It's a company from Shenzhen, China, and uh, I think LifeTech devices are widely available in Europe. Is it not Mario? Yes. Yeah, but probably the fenestrated devices are not uh, distributed there, right? Yeah. We use uh, we use a lot of this in both restrictive LV physiology as well as, I want more saline into it. Uh, we use this a lot in restrictive LV physiology as well as in pulmonary hypertension on the treat and close strategy. So as I show you, this is the, that is the fenestration. It, it's showing up nice on the camera. I'm able to see that. So the other device we have in Europe is the Oclutec, which will also give you a purpose-built fenestrated device. Correct. Right. We, have used, we have used both these devices quite often. And actually, I, I think one of my colleagues, Dr. Pramod Sagar, is making an analysis of the long-term patency of fenestration in, um, yeah, uh, in these patients. I think we are touching somewhere close to about 25 to 26 uh, devices. And uh, Pramod is making an, an assessment of the fenestrated device patients, what is their... Um, their outcome and also okay now uh, fluoro store this and repeat this now while Srija will show echocardiography 
Has anybody made a measurement of this uh, uh, waste now? You, you didn't monitor the device released by ECHO. You just see afterwards, right? Yeah, well, based on fluoroscopy, Mario. Once upon a time, we used to do only by based on fluoroscopy, no? So uh, now, uh, uh, Srija is now getting the echocardiogram. Make the echo bigger. It's a... Wow, looks a bit bulk, isn't it? Yeah, it's, Close it's, it's to the mitral valve, isn't it? Yeah, we will we will try to show you uh, all the uh, all the uh, valve and its relationship. Come here. I up. I up. Now show that uh, show that uh, this balloon uh, the balloon waste. Yeah, make the balloon waste bigger. The fluoroscopy bigger. Fluoroscopy bigger. Yeah. So it was measuring around 30. So now we can see uh, good device position and yeah, your no. pulmonary pressure is not not quite as low when the uh, balloon occlusion was carried out, right? Yeah, because because this is partial occlusion. And also right, the, fabric, still have flow. the fabric still will have flow. And moreover, uh, see now, now zoom on the mitral valve, Srija. One by one zoom on structures. Make the mitral valve alone. Yeah. Show the mitral annulus. Yeah. Yeah. How many options of uh, custom-made devices have you got there right now? Uh, we have got sizes starting from 26 to 46. 26 millimeters to 46 millimeters. Uh, can you can you check the may. TR gradient? Yeah. There may, was a may, there, there was a moderate tricuspid regurgitation uh, before. Because of the pulmonary hypertension, we are just re-measuring the pulmonary artery pressures. We had a um, high. Uh, uh, we had we had a, a child who was um, okay. five six years old who, who we put a fenestrated device like this, 27 millimeter, because it was very large ASD, and it, the fenestration was six millimeter, and it closed after two years. We had to put a stent in the fenestration. Is, uh, it, is, it my, is it my from Egypt? No, it's Amal from Egypt. Okay, okay, Amal, your voices... It was published. Your, okay, your voices were very similar. Now, I will tell you, our, our practice on fenestrated devices are to give uh, dual antiplatelets, aspirin plus Plavix together, for make, it, make it zoom, make it mag, uh, aspirin plus Plavix together, till we don't want the... Uh, uh, the fenestration to be patent. So until that uh, time, we give... was on aspirin initially, but when we when it closed up, put the stand, we actually put her on warfarin, small dose as well as aspirin. Okay. So uh, the stand uh, so, still open. Yeah, I was I was telling that our pa our pattern, our uh, the way in which we work is always give plavix. We don't withdraw the plavix as long as we desire the patency of this. So now we are able to see by thoracic echocardiogram uh, the flow through this fenestration, which is which is going through and through. And now that that, that is the, the that that's the device uh, you know we are, we are able to we are able to see. I will also show now this fenestration by fluoroscopy. Come to Arya Kanal. Get ready to release Vishnu. No, just give me some space. Before you release Kardal. that, before you yeah. release that, Steve, uh, does anyone yeah. in the audience think this device is too big and too bulky? Go I just was asking if there was a range, whether you consider a smaller device Little based elevo. on the waist of the balloon. Little elevo. Little elevo. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, 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 take a deep breath and hold. Take a deep breath. Uh, leave, the, leave the breath. Uh, now, take a deep breath. Okay. What we are seeing, the fenestration is actually on the inferior side of the you, you know, you see, you see the cable, and below the cable is the fenestration. Um, uh, okay, the, uh, the Salim's question about what sort of uh, device, whether this is a little bit larger. Uh, we we had a had a detailed transesophageal echocardiography yesterday, and the measurement was clearly 30 millimeters. Today, the balloon was also 30.5 or 30.6 like that. I would uh, like to be safer on the device because. 
the last thing that I want in this patient is a device that gets embolized or a device that gets malpositioned. So I intentionally oversized by plus four in order to make the device pretty stable. This is a patient where there is a lot of hemodynamic disturbance and I don't want an additional, come to AP, come to AP and release the device now, Vishnu. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, Eric, your question of whether uh, we could have used a little smaller device, yeah, maybe 32. However, uh, however, uh, you know, uh, like I was not tempted to uh, like try a significantly undersized device. Now we can take out the PA catheter also. Uh, what is uh, 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 what uh, uh, what you would have chosen, uh, Eric? In fact, in uh, fact, uh, half of the people decided to choose choose a complete device, whereas we decided for a fenestration. And uh, uh, what you would have chosen? Probably a 32 or a 30. I was looking at a 30 or 32 if okay. you had them available. Okay, okay. Yeah, they were available, but the the reason why I selected a 34 was that I wanted to go plus four from the transesophageal echo cardiogram size. Uh, transesophageal echo, I myself did it yesterday, and it was clearly 30. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, uh, lose it, lo lose on it. Now, as I as I speak to you, I'm just moving to the next lab. The next lab is having a very interesting rheumatic heart disease. And I know so that you have very interesting cases. One last question: yep. uh, You will continue your uh, pH therapy, and when do you repeat her actual PVR hemodynamics? Our pro our protocol is within about 12 to 18 months. She will come again into the cath lab. She will continue on dual pulmonary vasodilator. Uh, she will be on Bosentan 62.5 milligram two times a day, Sildenafil 20 milligram two times a day, aspirin plus Plavix, and then she will come back to my lab at the end of 12 to 18 months. A repeat cardiac hemodynamics will be done. If the PA pressures are in the moderate zone, she will continue on dual pulmonary vasodilator. If the pulmonary artery pressures are significantly low, almost to high normal levels. We will take away Bosentan and continue her on Sildenafil for another three to four years. We will repeat another hemodynamics at the end of three to four years. And if the PA pressures drop to complete normalcy, we will stop clopidogrel, we will stop Sildenafil and continue her only on aspirin. This has been the protocol that we are following. Uh, I, I, I am moving now to the next lab, but I am still ready to take questions from you while I am telling my requesting my colleagues to give the case presentation of the next case. Okay. Thank you. Can I say something? Just a comment, actually. Uh, Siva did a great case. I think uh, we see this a lot in, in our setup, people coming in late with pulmonary hypertension. I think one of the most important things here is to actually evaluate them pre-procedure. And one of the things which we routinely do, and I'm sure Shiva would have done, is to do a six minutes walk test. If they are fully saturated in air, and if you see any desaturation in a six minutes walk test, we would not take them to cath lab. We would put them on pulmonary vasodilators and then repeat the six minutes after walk it. test three after months it. down the line after we have given them pulmonary vasodilators. If there is time, you look at the chest x-ray, you look at the, uh, at the patient holistically. So I think it's important to understand that these patients are very different um, and, and they need to be looked at uh, not only individually but in a logical way and not to take everybody to cath lab unless you have to really. Thank you. Thanks, Masood. I, I don't think we even talked about pregnancy counseling either. Uh, so we're in the next room. Uh, congratulations yeah. on the last case. You didn't hear our applause, but trust us, it was there silently. Okay, okay. Uh, is that the, the last uh, words were from Masood Sadiq? Oh, discussion yeah. of uh, pre-procedure or even pre-cath six-minute walk testing. If a patient is desaturated, would you even consider cathing them or would you place them on pH therapy and then retest them six-minute walk? 